Give me a minute. It's 4 a.m. Lasers. Let's say that you wanted to draw out a 2D image using a laser. One way you could do it is by mounting it on an XY kinematic system like this, and then physically move the laser around to draw out an image. However, there has to be a better way. There is a better way. Laser galvos. A laser galvo operates off a very simple principle. If you have a mirror and you have a laser, the angle at which the laser, the laser beam is reflected off that mirror is equal to the angle at which it strikes it. So if we strike a mirror with a laser beam at a very shallow angle, it's reflected off at a shallow angle. However, if we strike it at a very steep angle, then it's reflected off at a steep angle. So by changing the angle at which the laser is allowed to hit the mirror, we can control where the laser is pointing. If we add a second mirror, one for the y-axis, and we keep our x-axis mirror, then by changing the angles, we can change where the laser beam is pointing. We can control how the mirrors are rotating using a stepper motor. However, the problem with stepper motors, even though they give excellent positional accuracy, they aren't very fast. We can't rotate the mirrors extremely quickly and draw an image very quickly. Now, normally, this isn't a problem because in 3D printing, whether you're sintering metal or you're curing resin, you don't need to go quickly. In fact, the opposite, you wanna go slowly. So laser galvos using stepper motors aren't a problem. But let's say that we wanted to project an image onto a wall or a piece of glass, or do you make a hologram somehow? Then we need a laser galvo system that can very, very, very quickly, at least 30 times a second, draw out an entire picture. We can't use separate motors. But what if we can combine the principle behind a galvo with a DC motor or an ESC? Well, let's try it. Everything was printed in 0.2 millimeter PETG on my Ender 3. To make a custom mirror, I used one-way mirror reflective film. It's made for covering windows. A little bit of super glue helps hold it in place. To hold the motor, I used a compliant grip. The rotor attaches, and a bolt helps lock everything in place. The key to this project is a photoresistor. It acts just like a limit switch. Whenever the laser passes over it, we'll get a signal on the Arduino. This will allow us to figure out the rotations per minute of the motor and the exact position of the laser at a given time. We use two photoresistors, one for the y-axis and one for the x-axis. In this particular design, we'll be using a stepper motor for the y-axis. The laser diode mounts in place on a 3D printed part which is held onto the stepper motor by friction. These little laser modules are extremely easy to use, in fact easier than an LED because they have their own built-in resistor. I decided to use a stepper motor for one axis on this experimental prototype, but this really wasn't necessary and I didn't end up using it. You could use another DC motor or ESC motor in place of the stepper motor for this axis However, this requires that you square the speed of your motor to maintain the same frame rate. It's not a MEMS oscillator, but it's okay for now. My work desk is a dresser, and since I hardly own any clothing, I can fill up the drawers with tools. Ever since I was 10 years old and saw the EEV blog video on how to solder, I wanted a nice soldering iron, specifically a Heiko, and recently I got my way. It's ironic that the first thing I had to use it for was punching a hole through plastic, which I forgot to put into the CAD design. In the future, I plan on doing a lot more soldering. Specifically, I have a design for a software-defined oscillator that can be used for high-voltage power supplies. We're using the standard method here for running the photoresistors, which involves a 10K resistor. The photoresistor and fixed-value resistor together act as a voltage divider, and the voltage is detected by the Arduino on an analog pin. Everything is hooked up to an Arduino Nano, and we can control the speed of the motor using a PWM module. I'm using a 12 volt computer power supply here. When we turn off the lights, we can see the line that the laser creates as the motor rotates the mirror. Because the photoresistor is hit at the beginning and the end of every rotation by the laser beam, we can use this to calculate the speed of the mirror as it rotates, as well as the position of our rotor at any given time. I wrote a function that found the RPM during each cycle, then averaged these values together and reported them over serial. It can also report the average degrees per millisecond, 
this is much more useful in calculating the position of the motor at any given time. Because if we know how long the motor has been running and its speed, then we can calculate exactly where it is. This is the result. It spends the first few seconds figuring out its rotations per minute as well as the home position. Then it tries to paint the pixel directly in front of it. Each pixel is one degree wide. The results are definitely not perfect and there's much room for improvement. It turns out you can buy tiny mirrors off Amazon in the form of disco ball covers. This is really perfect for our application and I'll have plenty left over. PETG is well known for its inability to work well with adhesives, so the foil mirror was very easy to remove. Once off, I replaced it with the tiny 5mm by 5mm mirror, and then I jostled it in place. In the future, I'd rather 3D print a recess to put it in. The change in spot quality was apparent and shocking. In the future, I'd really recommend using these mirrors instead of the film. Considering how small these mirrors are, it looks like I'll have to shrink down on this device a few orders of magnitude. I still wasn't able to get good results, and I believe this is the result of the inconsistency of the photoresistor. In the future, I'd like to try using an encoder in its place. I imagine that this design might also be useful for laser scanning, or laser marking. A laser system like this would be very well suited for a heads-up display, projecting an image onto a visor or piece of glass on a vehicle. Right now I'm waiting on a new lens for my aluminum 3D printer, so expect videos on that in the future. I'm also working on a video on how to convert an Ender 3 into an ECM machine, that way you'll be able to cut aluminum, steel, pretty much anything. So stay tuned. <laughs>